Hello and welcome to Radcliffe Cardiology. I'm Harriet Seeger and today I'm joined by Cecilia Lind, Professor and Consultant at the Department of Cardiology at the Karolinska University Hospital, Solna in Stockholm, Sweden. As part of our new initiative, Expert Perspectives in Cardiology, we'll be talking to Cecilia today um, and you'll find out more about this new initiative in the links underneath the video as well as more about Professor Lind. So today, um, well, hello and welcome, Professor Lynn, to start with. Thank you so much, Harriet. Happy thank to be here. <laughs> lovely, and thank you for joining us. Um, today we're going to be talking to you about re re cardiac resynchronization therapy, or CRT, particularly in women, a subject that um, you were talking about a lot at the European Heart Rhythm Association this June in Milan. So, Cecilia, can you tell us a little bit about what CRT is and why it's a popular treatment in heart failure? Yes, thank you. Well, it's a, a pacemaker that has an extra lead which is inserted outside of the left ventricle and through it you can make both uh, ventricles contract simultaneously which gives a better cardiac output and in turn that helps heart failure patients so that the mortality is reduced by 30% and the need for heart failure hospitalizations likewise. Now this is a therapy which is not indicated in everybody but at least 30% do have an indication and it's quite easy to see who those patients are because you only need to do an ordinary 12 lead ECG and if the patient has white QRS uh, such a patient should be considered for CRT. Okay, and one of your talks, you also focused on the disparity between men and women when it comes to distribution of CRT devices so can you shed a little bit of light about this for us please? Yes, it is intriguing. I mean, overall, the therapy is underimplemented, but particularly in women, and that was shown in a big U.S. study, where we showed that about one fourth of uh, those that receive CRT are women, as in contrast to men. And it's not just the U.S. It's the same in Europe, and it's the same in my country. So um, you only have to think it has to do a little bit with gender bias. It has to do perhaps with uh, the fact that women get skin heart disease at the later stage in life than men. I think it might have something to do also that uh, physicians think that women will get more complications by device therapy because they're smaller, etc. Uh, and very importantly, women are not very much represented in uh, trials on CRT, but women constitute. 20% and uh, I think that uh, is really the biggest obstacle to device implementation. Do you think this is something that's going to be corrected in the future? Well I sincerely hope so. I mean the gender issue have been much more highlighted by uh, all uh, cardiologists these days and also by the authorities. So for example the FDA has required that there should be 50% women representation in randomized controlled trials on device therapy. And just that fact will force the physicians to try and involve more females in the trials. Oh, that's good news. So can we talk a little bit about current guidelines for CRT therapy as well and, and how they've changed over the recent years and are they being followed? Mm. Well, I mean, the biggest change is really that first it was the moderately to severe heart failure patients that were indicated simply because in those the first trials were made. Uh, but then following 2010 and onwards, the, uh, the proof of um, equal uh, therapy uh, response in mild heart failure patients has become very apparent. So the new addition in particular is that everybody who's symptomatic heart failure that has wide QRS on the ECG has to be considered for a CRT. Okay, um, and other patients that don't benefit from CRT as well? Yes, that has also become very clear just recently. A trial showed that if you have narrow QRS uh, below 130 milliseconds, then you might even derive harm by getting CRT as compared to control therapy. So people with normal QRS are only slightly prolonged but less than 130 milliseconds should not be given CRT. Okay, well, thank you for that. My final question would be, um, what advice um, would you give cardiologists involved in this area? Well, the cardiologists are the leaders. We've done a trial in Sweden looking at the awareness of the indications and the guidelines through different sections of physicians and it's very apparent that cardiologists are aware of these indications. Internists only to a small degree and if you come out to private practitioners, uh, 
and primary care physicians, that knowledge is really low as far as ger and also geriatrics. So I think what the cardiologists really can do is spread the message, uh, both uh, through giving lectures in their area and talking to the patient associations in their area, being active in the press, that is acting as a cardiology leader in your environment. I think that is the most important thing the single cardiologist can do for this to change. That's super. Well, thanks so much for joining us today, Cecilia. And we thank you. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.